Hello, I'm IBX Toyka, and today I'm going to give you my first impression slash sort of a review for Viva Pinata Trouble in Paradise, which is the kind of expansion pack slash sequel to the uh, original game Viva Pinata, and it's the free game with gold for Xbox Live for the first half of this month. So, well, what I like to do in these first impressions slash reviews is I like to show you around about 10 minutes of gameplay, let you get the feel of whether this is the sort of game you'll enjoy or not, and honestly, this is one of those games that if you try to describe it to anyone, it sounds so bad, because if I explain it to you, a garden simulator with pinatas and plants and leveling and it just sounds kind of weird when you explain it like that and honestly it's the sort of game that I dismissed from like an angle because it's like oh yes I, I'd, I'd love to you know have a garden full of pinatas but there's something so brilliant about the execution of the idea that it makes what I think is still one of the best games of all time uh, maybe not the best game of all time but it's it's definitely up there no, no matter how you do stuff also I think as I just load up the garden I have yeah I've got a new residence so uh, I can start with what basically goes on the garden. So you start with just, uh, you know, a tiny bit, bit of garden which has some grass, has some mud, uh, has that sort of stuff, and uh, there's loads of these uh, pinatas that aren't residents around the outside, so uh, here's an example of one. Uh, you've got the sparrow mint, uh, and they're all you know named after various candies because it's pinatas, and basically what you have to do is every single one of these, you want to meet their resident requirements, and that one was eat one worm, and it ate one of my worms, so <laughs> now it's going to become a resident, and basically you want to slowly progress through the game, getting more and more of these pinatas come in your garden. So if you look over there, I think that's a Lickitoad. Um... I don't think it's actually called Lickitoad, but they've all, yeah, they've all got candy names, and that's a toad over there, for instance. And as you know, as they get close to the garden, you can see what they want to come in. So for this one, for instance, have one square. It's it's a very easy one at start, but they start to get really, really, really tricky, and that's how you get new pinatas in your garden. In addition to this, what you can do is um, you know because there's two ends of gardening. There's getting all the animals in there. Getting oops. Um, <laughs> there's two ends of the garden. There's getting all your animals in there, and there's also uh, you know actually growing plants. So the plants can get fairly complex. Uh, they start with like carrots turnips great right uh, but you can slowly get up to stuff that are actually like foot on trees that need cultivating and uh, uh, like even the plant system is kind of complex so we'll just grow another poppy for now though uh, so we'll just uh, buy and plant that right there um but as you can see, like, the, the game has two kind of facets. The big one is uh, getting your pinatas in, but you also need to make sure you get the plant life going because some pinatas require plants, and it also gets you experience, which is very good. So, um, to show you some of the more charming elements, just to kind of rush into that, uh, once you then have a, you know, a pinata in your garden, you want to kind of breed them with other pinatas. So, uh, of course, you need two of them to... Oh, wow, I, my controller's dying like crazy. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, but once you have, uh, you know, two of them in your garden, so I think I have two worms in here somewhere. Uh, I at least... Oh, yeah, I've got another one over there, as you can see. Uh, and you need to get them to meet their... Um romance requirements and with the uh, the worm it's very very simple you just need to build them a house which fortunately I have done already and here's the worm house so I'll just I'll show you what it looks like on the inside because it it's kind of amusing like the class that increases you go on but look here's here's where the worms sleep at nice as you can see they've got some nice uh, couches in there I, I, I like to treat the worms <laughs> uh, but yeah it's 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 the strangest like most surreal thing that's also brilliant so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna breathe these two together and uh, how you do that is because once you own a pinata you can kind of lead it around your garden you can committed to eat stuff and that sort of thing. Also, I think we've got a ladybug or whatever it's actually going to be called. A, um, a bite, a bispotty. Um, we've got him uh, prancing around the garden looking for those poppies. Um, and then there's also Professor Tester, who we'll get into later, but basically he just likes to menace the whole thing. And, oh, okay, we got them to romance then. So, uh, if you recall, I just clicked the worms on each other, they went over to each other, and they're romancing. So, uh, once you then get them to do that, you then need to complete an obstacle. Uh, of course, this is the uh, you know the easiest one in the game. As you can see, not really that difficult uh, unless you want to get all of the hearts, and even then, not crazy difficult. Um, but basically. Yeah, so uh, whenever you, uh, you know, then get two animals to romance, you have to take them from an obstacle course. I don't know what this is meant to simulate, but it's really, really fun. Like, it makes it makes this romance thing, it's this maze thing that, uh, like, as you get later in the game, they get, like, genuinely challenging. And there's something kind of brilliant about that to me. So, uh, yeah, once you finally beat the maze, then they'll start to romance. As you can see, the worms uh, are going over to their house to go and uh, romance, if you will. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we'll come back to them later when they've done that. So... In the meantime, I'll show you one of the higher-end animals, which is the horse Dashi uh, over here. Also, I think he's being attacked by Professor Pester here. Um, so I guess we might have to delay what I'm about to talk about to talk about uh, some of the ruffians and some of the bad uh, pianos. So, although the game is just all fun and games, getting, you know, fairly cute animals like this sparrow over here or this uh, horse over here, uh, or horse Sashio, if you will, uh, into the garden, then there is, you know, kind of the negative side. And that comes with Professor Pester here, that comes with the ruffians, and that comes with all of the 
these. I've got them all, by the way. Uh, if uh, I, I, I don't know if I mentioned, but I played this game for so long. I have like eight million chocolate coins. I, I've played the game too long. Also, I think he just killed on the pinatas. I was gonna show you, but I guess that's uh, just as good because it shows kind of what you need to watch out for. So. Also, he's eating all the life candy. It's 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 very kind of weird. Um, <laughs> but basically, uh, yeah, what what will happen is Professor Pesta, his ruffians, or the um, bad pinatas will come into your garden, and they'll start to try and mess things up. To be totally honest. And uh, with Professor Pesta, there's no real way, way around him. It's just kind of an evil that comes in every now and then that you can't really deal with. Uh, I have a watcher somewhere around here, but he's he's not doing. He's he's meant to really you know watch for that stuff, but he's not doing a very good job. <laughs> and um, yeah, basically the only way you can watch out for him is by having watches and stuff, and that's how that goes. So, uh, now we've got the two worms, they romance, etc. They have this worm egg just here. So, uh, of course, because it's a child's game instead of actually reproducing, because what, what would that be all about? Um, what they actually do instead is you can, uh, you know, just you see them create an egg, and then the egg eventually hatches, and you get another worm, which is just fine. So, of course, with the higher end animals, uh, just, you know, the romance requirements get fairly complex, so I only have one horstachio now, so this is a bad example. Also, so, wow, they actually can jump on each other. I've never seen that. <laughs> uh, it's, there's something just so cute and adorable about this game that even if that's not your thing, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. It's just, there's something so amazing about how real everything interacts. Like, there's like a hundred pinatas, but they all have their own unique little charm to them. Uh, like this little snake around. It, even the snake's kind of cute. Um, but yeah, so every time you do something new, so every time you get a new resident, every time you... Um, yeah, we're going to have to slowly get this uh, guy's romance requirements up. I'll just show you the base gist of what's going on, because this is a fairly high-end animal. It's not at the top end. They get really complex later on. Uh, but this is a fairly complex animal to get to romance. So I've got the house already, and I've got the pinata already, which are, of course, you know, pretty uh, easy requirements. So uh, I've got the horstachio house, and I've got the 50 square pinometers of grass. But I need to give him a rosette, I need to give him a toffee apple, and I need to give him horseradish sauce. Uh, these are fairly complex things, because you can't get any of those by default. But uh, if you have the coins, then what you can do is, you just go into the village, uh, you dress him up with a fancy rosette because uh, there's actually this village full of uh, you know shops that you can actually improve your animal with so if you want, if I wanted to I could just take him in here and give him a cowboy hat or give him a you know, a traffic cone on the head. You know, I think he's going to have a traffic cone on the head. Um, <laughs> but yeah, what, you, what you're also meant to do here is some animals need to be wearing things. It increases their self-confidence as something to breed. So uh, even though we're giving him the rosette that makes him feel like a winner, we'll give him the traffic cone too. And uh, that should give us a very nice uh, pinata in total. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's head back to the village now and let's show you that pinata. So as you can see, uh, now he's very happy because he's wearing his rosette. He feels like he's just won a contest. That's what horses need to do. Uh, so now we're going to give him a, a toffee apple that we uh, fortunately have just here already, and we're going to feed it to him like so. Uh, so some, some animals will only eat once they have a certain amount of happiness. You have to keep an eye on this happiness gauge, and that kind of gives you a feel of what's going on there. So, uh, every, uh, again, every single time you get a new uh, animal in your garden, or you get new animals to romance, uh, I wonder, actually, uh, I think these... Yeah, I might just need to get them bluebell seeds in a house, but... Um, Every time you get new animals to romance, you get new animals in the garden, or you romance animals enough time to get the master breeder achievement, uh, you get more experience. And this experience is kind of the driving force behind the game, uh, because uh, it's going to be a really annoying animal. I think it's even the second animal you get, so let's... let's oh no, it's like the fourth or fifth. There we go. Uh, but yeah, so, um, sorry about that. <laughs> But basically, um, even though, uh, you know, they, they start fairly simple and you, you, you kind of need that experience, it kind of drives you through the game. Because uh, as you get more experience, you get better shovels. So uh, I don't know how I changed the shovel, but as you can see, I've got a pretty high-end shovel here. Um, it gives you access to more plants, like more plants will show up because uh, there's a guy called Cedos who just runs through your garden, gives you more plants. And it also gives you access to more staff members for your garden, gives you access to some pinatas that only show up. And yeah, it's kind of, it's something you just need to do and it gets very addicting after a while because it's fun to just go through the game trying to grow your gooseberry bush, trying to you know, keep your poppies going and doing all these various things. Um, and, you know, it's the, the XP becomes the thing that makes you, you know, convinced you need to do it. So, uh, yeah, what we'll actually do is we'll feed the uh, experiments their seeds now. So, they need some bluebell seeds. Fortunately, I've already seen them. If I hadn't seen them, you, you know, you have to look around to specifically get them. But we'll, we've got... Oh, wait, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, I'll just uh, buy a couple of seeds, place them there and there. And then that should allow our uh, experiments to actually romance with them. So, uh, or not romance with the seeds, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, so, 
We'll uh, throw the, uh, the experiments over there. And also, just by the way, just to show you, because uh, there's a, a pinata inside here now. As the houses get fancier, so do the insides. And there's something so surreal and brilliant about watching this. And uh, I don't know. That's that's why I think this game is just so adorable and cute. And even though it is those things, and even though I like some serious games, this game is just so appealing to me. And I could play it for hours. And I kind of want to start a new account and just start from scratch again. Because, I don't know, just watching confused horses, uh, little pinatas in their own uh, little houses there. There's there's something about that, you know? So, I think both the Sparrowmints have now eaten their bluebells. Uh, let's quickly check the other one. Which means as soon as that house is finished, we should be able to breed them. Also, it's time to night time. Uh, there is a day-night cycle in the garden. So, uh, I can quickly look up at the sky, actually, and see the moon, I think. If there was a moon, I could see the moon, though. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you, you can look up in the sky, and uh, you can vaguely see what's going on there. So like, um, uh, you can see if it's raining or whatever. But um, the, the main point I was trying to say, there's a day-night cycle. Some, uh, so for instance, the Prez tail, I believe this is. Uh, he'll only come out when it's, uh, so he has to eat a bunny comb or a tartridge. Uh, but yeah, the Prez tail will only come out at night time. Some animals only come out at night time. And yeah, it's something you have to uh, keep an eye on. It's, you know, it's it's full-on garden simulator. I, I don't know how they made a garden simulator so entertaining. But they genuinely did, and I'm, I'm impressed with that, <laughs> to say the very least. So uh, I'll show you. I'll just quickly show you, um, you know, slightly more complex uh, 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 mating program. I was going to mate the two horses, but apparently I can't do that right now. Uh, so let, there we go. Experiment one, experiment two. They might be a little sleepy, so maybe they won't do it. But we can hope for the best. Um, and yeah, even though this game is uh, almost 10 years old, the, the original version, you can see that because it's just so brilliantly, like, gra uh, you know, the graphical style is just so well done, that even though you can see it technically looks awful, like, look at this grass, the, the game in general still looks kind of good. Also, I think they've just blown into their house. Let's, should we just let them? We'll just, we'll just let them. They, they tried to breed, they, they gave it their best, and they didn't achieve anything. So, um, yeah, we can either wait for night to finish, or we can, uh, do this to actually get them out of their house. I'll give them a, a slight tap on the, uh, back, get them out of there. And, uh, then they should be awake and ready to breed. Uh, so, yeah, you, you meant to breed animals a lot of times to get the mass breed achievement, but, of course, breeding them the first time is just as important. Um... Also, for later on in the game, if if you like start once you start to build your perfect garden, you're like, yeah, I've got this perfect. Uh, the game, I'll actually while these two animals breed, uh, the game does start to give you um, some challenges. So, for instance, uh, I've got to start to find like I know a parry bow with a pillager's helmet and a bushy mustache. <laughs> uh, you know, I, you got to find pinatas all around the world, and that's kind of the story mode, if you will. Uh, it's not so necessary, and it's you know new to the expansion, but you know it's something you can do if you want to give yourself something to drive you forwards rather than experience. So, uh, yeah, here's a girl so I wonder what this blue bomb does you know let's not find out <laughs> um, but okay oh, it, fo it follows you oh no uh, is that gonna ruin this I think it is oh, re oh really it's an insta-kill bomb oh wait no maybe okay no that'll be fine we're fine let's let's just head uh, straight to some more hearts and to the other experiment come and get me I, I'm gonna try I mean you're covering up some of the screen there so uh, I think I might need some more hearts actually you know actually let's just let's just cover it there yeah we we bred we we earned that breeding time so <laughs> As you can see, you get some coins bonus if you do it well enough. Obviously, I've got enough coins that it doesn't really matter too much. But uh, and and then you get the two animals to breed, and that's always nice, right? And I think uh, oh my plant trader, I probably should water that. <laughs> so uh, while, while we wait for them to breed, because uh, you know they're gonna go off do their own private thing inside the house, uh, we're gonna quickly water this plant just here. So. We'll give it a long plot. Uh, and also, uh, every time you get an animal to breathe the first time, uh, you get to see this um, little animation, which is new for every an animal. And there's uh, there's something kind of amazingly weird about it. So I'll, I'll let you watch this, and uh, yeah. I... I... <laughs> That was that was pretty pretty really tame. Like you get some really weird ones where they dance and they tango and then they breed and I'm just saying it's weird, but it's wonderfully weird. So yeah, this is Viva Pinata: Trouble in Paradise. It's a game I recommend you at the very least try because it's so unique. And I've got some rotten apples here. It's just so unique that I I, I really feel like it's worth at least a try because it might be your new favorite game. Um, at the very least, it's an amazing looking game. Uh, I'd say this is still one of the better looking games of all time because it, you know, doesn't focus on just quality. It focuses on this amazing art style that you can you can just be like, wow, that's that's brilliant. And that's what I like about this game. Great art style, 
unique as like probably the most unique gameplay I've ever seen, and it still somehow works. So uh, definitely give it a pick up. Uh, you can do that on the Xbox Store. Uh, the Xbox One Game of Gold. I'm going to be reviewing slash first impression in a couple of days. So definitely keep your eyes out for that. Like the video if you did like it. Thank you for watching, and uh, check out the podcast from yesterday. Here is an outro.